that could prove. And by golly, I'll tell you what, they're in for a good day. Hello again, everybody. Lance Russell and Dave Brown. We're right along ringside, ready to go with another big day of championship wrestling. David. Oh, I'm ready for this one today. We will be looking at boy Tony in here. He will uh, not be defending uh, the belt, but he has the belt, the Mid-America Championship. He'll be going in a non-title single match today. A little bit later on, the international champion, Big Bubba. Boy, was he impressive in our first look at him. He'll be back today in a handicap match. Later on, we will have folks such as Tracy Smothers. We will have uh, Soto and uh, Gato, uh, Gato and Soto will be in a little bit later on, too. And in addition to that, we are going to be bringing back one of the great names out of championship wrestling who will have a special introduction for us. And that comes up very soon. Yeah, we'll be doing that right after we get back from this opening. So I'll tell you what, in order to get it underway, take time out. And we're going to be back in just one minute. Still got plenty of excitement lined up here for you today as we get ready to go with our first match. Before we do, I want to bring in a guy right now that I'll tell you what, his name is absolutely one of those names that you hear every time you start talking wrestling with anybody who's been around more than a couple of weeks because they all remember, uh, not fondly in some cases, I'm not going to say that charming is the word to say about him, certainly interesting and rough is a way to describe Sputnik Monroe, let's bring him in here. Yeah, I've had as many people ask about, what about the great Sputnik Monroe? What's happening with him? And we say, well, the last we heard, the last we heard, he's standing right here beside us, Sputnik. Well, you know me, I've been like Coca-Cola, baby. I've been everywhere. Everywhere. So just pick a spot. I, I had a little tour and uh, wrestled in Africa. And uh, But the main reason I'm really here, we're not cutting up jackpots about what I did do or something. But I brought somebody here that can do something, and that's Bubba the Brawler Monroe, born and raised in Memphis, Tennessee. It's time you got set on your ear again. Oh, oh. <laughs> this is your son that's going to be involved in the wrestling here that's today. It. Bubba, 245 right. pounds of twisted steel and sex appeal, Lance Russell. Okay, Sputnik, we uh, can say this. That if he had a teacher that was any rougher than you are, I can't imagine well, that's, doing it. That's why we call him the brawler. Yeah. I, I can imagine to say for a living fact that there's a guy that's got an apt description. The brawler, Bubba Monroe, and we'll be looking at him. We'll be talking with Sputnik a little bit later on. Dave, we're about ready to go with this opening bout. In the ring right now for a one-fall, 10-minute time limit match. From Memphis, Tennessee, at 216 pounds over on the right side of the screen, that's Jim Jamison. And going against him from Alexandria, Louisiana, 242 pounds, Bubba Monroe. One-fall, 10-minute time limit. Jerry Calhoun is the referee. Okay, the bell is off and running, and we're getting our first look at Bubba Monroe Sputnik going with Jim Jamison, who took that arm and took Bubba over and down right off the bat. We're going to get Sputnik to uh, slide in here and sit down right beside us, and we'll be hearing some comments about uh, uh, his son and his protege. Who? Play, play him in there, Tiger. Boy, I'll tell you one thing. Ooh, he nailed Jameson hard and then caught him with a forearm in the corner. Beals him back out of that corner and across the ring. Did he uh, come to it naturally, uh, Sputnik? He always wanted to be a wrestler? Or yeah. What was uh, his attitude he, about he got, it? He got kicked out of school a couple of times for fighting, and, and uh, his mother had always um, been kind of against me having him work out or anything. But his, he had a, a nature like mine, and uh, by looking at him, you can tell that he's exactly like me and uh, in his attitude and uh, everything else. Uh, he's just exactly like his daddy. He's got a, like I told him, you may not want to start this because you got a tough trail to, to travel. And uh, so. Cover one, two, and Jameson kicks out at the two count. Tough trail to cover is right, I'll tell you that, partner. Well, a lot of, a lot of juniors uh, have uh, broke into wrestling business, and I think they're probably some of the most famous or infamous are the Fuller brothers and the Fields brothers, and uh, we could go on down the line a long ways, but I don't think they've had the extensive training that he's had, and he was an outstanding athlete in uh, school, in lettered in four sports in high school, so he, he comes come, by it naturally to say the very That's least. it. 
be kind of interesting. I'm sitting here thinking as uh, you're talking about that. Uh, we've got a father-son situation, a second-generation wrestling uh, uh, situation right here in our championship wrestling with Jeff Jarrett, the son of Jerry Jarrett, who has uh, just made his debut not too many months ago and has really been very, very impressive. As he I think you got a, you know, I've always done my home road work real well. I think you got a Japanese fellow named Tanaka. Is that true? Oh, yeah. yeah. His That's father true. was also a wrestler. Well, you got a lot of second generation wrestlers. The only difference about that is that I got the best. Well, <laughs> that's what we're here to see is uh, Bubba Monroe. Go ahead and break his arm. He won't yeah. give up breaking. Hey, hey. No, we don't need to start off his debut with any kind of uh, tactic like that. As he has. Uh, the, boy, the boy has got to be ignorant if he don't give up with that hole. He's got his arm really. You know what I always up in that hammerlock. What I always said, Lance, it takes a fine mind and a fine body and perfect coordination to be a great anything announcer, wrestler, or whatever. And there it is. The 24 karat gold wrestler right there. Bubba the Brawler Monroe. Referee telling me better break it up right now as uh, he was a little hard of hearing there at the first, and he comes by that naturally too. In the air, ooh. PTA. What is that? Pain, torture, and agony. He PTA. popped him down and nailed it. One, two, three. It was good enough for a pin, too. <laughs> Bubba Monroe comes through with a victory in there over Jim Jameson, and uh, we'll take a look at that PTA that Sputnik referred to a little bit uh, ago as the finish. He picks him straight up in the air and drives him right down with that spine right down on that knee, and you can see Jameson from then on. It was a question of rolling it up, and right now the referee trying to help Jim out of there. You got girl wrestlers on TV today? Uh, well, no, but it's time for us to slide over here to the interview set because the new Mid-America, uh, Sputnik, if you'll just sit right there, we're going to slip right over here. And you are looking at Boy Tony, who kind of stunned the wrestling world when I, you got to figure it was an upset. He beat Tracy Smothers and is now the Mid-America heavyweight champ. Take your glory because you're the one that's got the belt. That's exactly right, Lance Russell. One picture's worth a thousand words, isn't it? Just take a look, everybody. I am the new champion. And I said I was going to beat Tracy Smothers, and I did just that. And I'm going to continue to be the champion for a long, long time. Well, we uh, hear the comments from Boy Tony. Now, exactly how long you're going to have that belt will be depend on whether you have to get by, whether you can get by Tracy Smothers. Remember, there's a return clause in that championship. So ultimately, you're going to have to meet Tracy again. I will be ready when that time comes Lance Russell I will be prepared for Tracy Smith okay boy Tony and we're gonna have an opportunity to see him in the ring we just will go ahead and get it and uh, go with the second match right here in this first set before we take let's just uh, take a break let's just go to the ring and we will be ready to go with our second match of the day this one is going to be a one fall 10 minute time limit bout and across the way, wrestling out of Memphis, Tennessee, is Mike Murphy. And his opponent in a non-title bow with one fall, 10 minutes in time, at about 235 pounds, wrestling from St. Louis, Missouri. Boy, Tony, the Mid-America champion, your referee for this affair is going to be Jerry Calhoun. I would have to agree with you, he is a little strange in his attire, Sputnik. The last time I seen a wrestler with a gold purse, it was uh, Cora Combs or somebody. It sure wasn't a guy, so I... <laughs> I, I, uh, I better bow out of here. i never seen anything like this. It, I, I'm not going to come in on it, you know. Uh, I hope you don't. <laughs> <off TV. laughs> That's the truth. Sputnik Monroe, you've got to believe we'll be seeing a lot more of him. 
before before the tour is over with and look at Tony going after Murphy reached out to shake hands with him kicked him in the midsection Murphy fell for it took a thumb from Tony as the referee trying to get in a position to see him. look at the nice reversal from Mike Murphy boy Tony again the referee this time sees him jumps in and says watch the thumb big upper arm well that's almost too much to take at one time. But Nick Monroe and boy Tony back to back. I tell you, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, Sputnik uh, with his son Bubba making uh, an impressive debut here. <laughs> had no trouble getting the victory. And boy, boy Tony, uh, he mentioned uh, in an interview we had with him a week or so ago that he had had a, a total change. The uh, the old Tony, Tony Falk, uh, who almost never won a match had changed and sure enough now this guy comes back in here today and he owns the mid-america title you know one of the things we said though dave when tony falk was his name and he was losing match after match it wasn't that falk couldn't wrestle because he could he just made so many dumb mental errors that he he, he would he would have a match one and then he would blow it and end up getting beat time after time, time we after saw him do that and uh that's apparently changed at least so far mike murphy trying to battle his way out from under that face lock which i think had a little eye gouging involved in it you know, i'm not sure boy tony would appreciate it but i think uh, boy tony has put on about 10 pounds too since he was here last time yeah he's coming in uh a little heavier than the old 226 that he used to weigh. Well, it didn't come in his hair because he's uh, he's lost a little up there <laughs> on top in one of the more weird hair suits that I've seen on man or woman. It is a little strange. Yes. Mike Murphy back into the ropes and boy Tony slamming away, whip across the ropes, in the air with a big power slam. Boy, that's something new to. Boy, Tony's repertoire, we haven't seen that in years gone by. One, two, three, and that's it. Yeah, two minutes, 43 seconds worth of it as uh, Boy Tony takes the victory. Two minutes plus, and Boy Tony is the victor. We've got a little musical look at Boy Tony. Here it is. Hello, this is Boy Tony, and I want to give you a progress report on how my
Wednesday night, Evans will call us in for the first time. It'll be giveaway night, and look at the prizes you can win. It's Championship Wrestling Giveaway Night, Wednesday night at the Evansville Coliseum. You'll see great wrestling action with the return of Jerry the King Lawler, plus free prizes for the fans, including 30 quartz digital watches, dolls for the kids, a portable TV, air rifle, AM, FM radio, cassette player, dual cassette recorder, radio headset stereo, all this plus outstanding wrestling action at no increase in prices, Wednesday night at the Evansville Coliseum. Great prize night, Wednesday night in the Evansville Coliseum, plus an outstanding card with six matches, including a six-man tag match. It'll have Sato, Goto, and Yamamoto against Jared Jarrett and Wildfire Tommy Rich with the losing team to be strapped to the top That's rope right. and gets ten lashes. That's right, Lance. The loser's going to be strapped to that rope, Ooh. and this is our kind of match. Tojo, you know we can beat you. All the fans know we can beat you. I can't wait to get to Evansville because I'm going to strap Tojo till he's going to be bleeding, Lance. Get there early. You may get one of those prizes too, because there's some dandies to be given away. AWA Southern Heavyweight Championship Act. Here's the man back and ready to go against Dirty Rhodes. Let me just say this. Dirty Rhodes, I know you're out there. I know you hear what I'm saying. You've had two weeks. That's how long I've been suspended for the little bottle incident. Well, you got yourself a two-week grace period, brother. And during those two weeks, I've been sitting and I've been thinking and I've been seething. And I've had all that anger built up inside of me, brother, because nobody's going to do what you try to do to me and get away with it. If you think me busting that bottle over your head was something, I promise you, Wednesday night, that was just the start of what's in store for you. Explosion coming up Wednesday night, the Evansville Coliseum. You've got to be out there and see it. And while you're at it, take a look at the great watches and all of that that you may be coming away from the championship wrestling on Wednesday night. This is one night you must be there. Bring in the new international heavyweight champion. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> uh, let's bring in Big Bubba. He went to battle. This big 407 pounder holds the new international right here, belt. And right here, Lance Russell. You see this right here? This is what it's all about, the international belt. Lance Russell, I told you, I told all these people last week on this TV here that the next time they see me, it'd be with the gold in my hand. The rightful owner of the international, pack, the international belt right here. Well, let me tell you something. I don't care who it is. I'll take on the roughest, the toughest competition that you all have to offer. I don't back down for anybody. I don't plan to be a closet champion. I'm going to have this belt for a long time. It's going to take a big man to take it away from a big man. And names don't mean anybody. That could be anybody that wants this belt. Just come on down. The water's right. Well, I tell you what, you won't have to go looking for competition. They'll be after that belt. You can better. I'm ready for him, Lance Russell. And a matter of fact, the pleasure's been all yours because there's some more meat that I have to take care of. Got a handicap match lined up for Big Bubba today, Dave. And let's go to the ring as we see this giant of a man head up there in a handicap bout today. Two against one, it's going to be in the handicap match. The Bryant brothers stepping up uh, to ringside right now, Randy and Robert. They weigh in at a total of 474 out of Bartlett, Tennessee. Big Bubba, six foot seven, 407. Out of Miami, Florida, current holder of the international belt. Referee Jerry Calhoun, a signal for the bell, and we are underway. The Bryants. Oh, I tell you what, I do not envy the task that these guys have. This is not the tag format either. They, no. uh, Bubba said, yeah, put them both in fine with me. They both went down at the same time. Look at the power of Big Bubba. Randy and Robert. Looking for an opening. Trying for a double leg dive. That didn't work either. Look at that. About a half knee lift, and Randy Bryant went flying halfway across the ring. Bubba grabs Robert now. He's into the rope, ducks under. Big Bubba has him up in the air, slams him. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The knee was there. 
when Bryant got to it. We've talked about like running into a brick building. Well, <laughs> there. Oh, look at this. That's all. He didn't even try. He dropped down on him with both legs across, and that is 407 pounds. One, two, three. Had to be in. Minute 53 seconds to time. A minute 53, and Big Bubba once again incredibly impressive in a handicap match. Man, I guess so. Hey, I tell you what, we better do too. Maybe we better check that ring. Did you hear that sound that on top the rope? rope uh, yeah, snap. Yeah, no sound, doubt about it. Yeah, it sounded like one of them went in there. So right now, we're gonna take a look. And a young fella, we get a kick out of looking at him every time we see him in that wrestling ring. We're talking about Jeff Jarrett. Here's a little musical salute with Jeff. Coliseum Wednesday night giveaway night. You gotta take a look at this. It's Championship Wrestling Giveaway Night. Wednesday night at the Evansville Coliseum. You'll see great wrestling action with the return of Jerry the King Lawler, plus free prizes for the fans, including 30 quart digital watches, dolls for the kids, a portable TV, air rifle, AM FM radio, cassette player, dual cassette recorder, radio headset stereo. All this plus outstanding wrestling action at no increase in prices. Wednesday night at the Evansville Coliseum. Wednesday night, you may be a big winner. By golly, you're going to win all the way with a card that's going to be there. Six outstanding matches, including an AWA Southern Heavyweight Championship match with Jerry Lawler and Dirty Rhodes. A six-man strapping match with Wildfire, Tommy Rich, Jeff, and Jerry Jarrett against Sato Goto and Yamamoto. Much, much more. Just get tired of that kind of trouble. Will you get to the right there? We're going to get the chair for you, and you can just sit right down in here. Yeah, the threat by Tojo. He's saying since, uh, since Pat Tanaka has been a partner with Jeff Jarrett and involved with the Jarrett family, he's going after him today. So watch yourself, Pat. 
Akio Sato, Tarzan Goto, and the Ninja with Tojo Yamamoto in air corner. And across the way, it's Tracy Smothers, Pat Tanaka, and David Haskins. That is Akio Sato against Tracy Smothers. move against Sato, feeling pretty good about it. Crowd liked it too. Tojo over here in the corner, agitating the crowd and Lance and me and everybody else. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you got to watch your eye because this son of a gun man, he'll nail you with that That's stick before you know it. Tatsunaga hops in the ring with a Kio Sato. Tojo said they're keying on Tanaka in this one. Sato really going after him with a right hand. Oh, oh, look at him! Tojo's team, not the only ones that know something about the martial arts out of the Far East. Look at Tanaka. First Sato, now Goto. And that headbutt by Goto, devastating. He follows it up with a chop. Ah, smart move by Tanaka. the tag, and here comes David Haskins. Haskins against Goto. Goto again using the head. Haskins again knocked to the mat. Tag by Goto on the ninja. Man, under the mask, out of the Far East, picks up David Haskins. He's a big ride, dude. Yeah, yeah, he is very tall. Here's Akio Sato back in. He started the match for his team. This time, Haskin gets it down in a small package. Count of one is all he can get. Good move by Haskin. Boy. Boy, he's getting better and better. He is. Every time we've seen him recently, he has really looked fine. Seen some good moves. He's reaching for the corner now. Tarzan Goto determined to keep him out of there, and he did keep him away from the tag. Haskins out near the center of the ring. Tarzan Goto jumping up and down on him. Haskins battling back with right hand. The headbutt again by Tarzan Goto puts him to the mat. Haskins staggered with a chop. The ninja back in. Oh, what a kick. Sidekick by the ninja. Haskins in desperate need of a tag in the corner, but he's a quarter of the ring away from it right now. Now he's half a ring away as they take him back over to their corner as the tag is made and Akio Sato takes over the action. Tracy Smothers. Smothers starts into the ring after Sato. The referee sends him back out. Tojo poking at him with that stick. You see Tojo right there with a jacket and hat on, ever present during these matches at ringside. As if Sato and Goto weren't enough, Throw in Tojo, and then you throw in the ninja. What a day's work you got. You know, we know. There's the tag. Here comes Ninja. Sato and Gojo, and everybody's in the ring. All six of them at it right now. Tracy's mother's over with Goto, and there goes David Haskins down on the floor. He was thrown over the top rope. That's disqualification, but the referee did not see it. I saw that. This Tracy Tojo just laced David Haskins with that kendo stick. 
Down goes Pat Tanaka. Kojo trying to reach out where he can get him with it. Pokes at him right in the midsection with the end of that stick. Oh, boy, I tell you, you got something coming, Yamamoto. Climbs up into the ring with that stick. That's going to do it, Dave. That'll have to be a disqualification. That doesn't do Pat Tanaka any good as the ninja now has that kendo stick. Tracy tied up in the ropes over there. David has oh. Tanaka ducked, and the ninja hit Kojo in the head with a kendo stick, and now Tanaka's got it. Pat Tanaka ducks out of the way. The ninja nailed Kojo instead. Tanaka gets the kendo stick, and he's after him. Yamamoto chugging his little fat frame along. Tanaka beating a tattoo. Gracie's mother's got a lick in. Sato and Goto were smart enough to get out of there. Yes, indeed. Tracy's mother's had the chair and Tanaka the kendo stick. 5.09 the time on it. Disqualification for the Japanese team. Tracy's mother's Pat Tanaka, David Haskins get the victory. Boy, I'll tell you, uh, I, I hate to cheer on somebody using a stick or a chair like that. But, brother, if anybody deserves it, it's Yamamoto, Sato, Goto, and the Ninja, too. Situation where where Paul Diamond was a victim of these guys, put a chair up in the ring, came off and broke the man's knee. We had some, some follow-up words we wanted to hear from Paul, and listen to this. You know, I've been sitting in this room for what it seems like years now, and it's only been a week. Uh, I just can't take this anymore, and I have decided to uh, go back home, back to Canada, and uh, I guess see my family. Uh, it's been a year and a half since I have seen my family and I had made big plans to go see them, to have big celebrations, big parties, see all my friends, tell them how well I'm doing, how good everything's going and instead I gotta go home on crutches with this darn cast on my leg and I gotta look my father and my mother right in the eye and say, these three Japanese geeks busted my leg, and here I am, and I need your help. I need some help to be fed, because right now, I don't have any money coming in, and I need to survive. I know all the times before you've helped me, but this is one of the toughest ones, because as I said, I want to go home happy, and show them how well I'm doing. And instead, here I am on crutches. Tojo, and especially Sato and Goto, I want you to think about that. Think about it real, real carefully because I'm gonna have eight, maybe 10 weeks to think about it. The pain that I'm gonna feel going home and looking in my parents' eyes and telling them I'm a loser. Let me tell you something. The longer that it takes, the madder I'm gonna get. And when I get in that ring with you, Sato and Goto, you will have enough time to have thought about it too, what it feels like to go home to your country and say, I'm a loser because Paul Diamond took care of me. I'll tell you, brother, I'm gonna do anything and everything that I can. And every day I'm gonna think about you. And when the time comes, just think about what I said. You one day are gonna have to go home back to Japan and look at your parents and say, I lost. Paul's home, and he will get his chance. Pat Tanaka, yeah, Pat. I'll tell you what, Paul Diamond, he's got six weeks. Okay, so Japs, you got it in six weeks coming. But I got a match signed right now with the Ninja. And I'll tell you what, you're going to get it. I'm going to take every ounce that he has, and I'm going to beat him with it. I don't blame you one bit, Pat, for what, uh, what they do at any moment, expecting to get poked by Yamamoto. I, I'm sorry, just a disgrace to your people, Tojo. That's all I got to say. We'll take a break, and we're going to be back in a moment. Excitement Incorporated, coming in right now, Rick McCord. 
matchup for them. As they've got Rhodes and Bass with Larry Wright. Uh, your magnetic personality, uh-huh. That's Dirty Rhodes talking. Well, let's go with the official introduction, Dave. All right, it'll be one fall, 10-minute time limit. Introducing at a total weight of 444 pounds out of Salem, Virginia, Rick McCord, and out of Minneapolis, Minnesota, John Paul. Together they are Excitement Incorporated. Going against them out of Austin, Texas, and Arkansas, Dirty Rhodes and Don Bass in their corner. It's Larry Wright. Bass and Rhodes weigh in at 602 pounds. Starting out, Don Bass against John Paul. Paul, the larger of the two, Excitement Incorporated wrestlers before Salem, Virginia, as uh, Dave said, Minneapolis, the home of John Paul. Don Bass out of Arkansas. Big as he is, it takes a good part of that state for him to live in. <laughs> yeah. Over 300 pounds. John Ball uh, said a couple of weeks ago when they came in here, when we were talking, he said he was delighted to be down here, the home of tag team wrestling. He's going to be even more delighted in about another month or month and a half when that weather turns off in its usual style up in Minneapolis, baby. You're right. Yeah, he uh, he's coming from one of the snow capitals of the world up there. Dirty Rhodes, John Paul. Dirty Rhodes and Don Bass, uh, they've, they've had some, some bad press over their style of wrestling. They have a flagrant disregard for the rules on many, many occasions. But they are big, they are tough, and they can wrestle yeah, if they, they want can. to. That's true. A couple of mean dudes, particularly that dirty rose boy. You know, it bothers me that they've always got somebody hanging around in the corner. If it's a tag team, they got Larry Wright, the former torch, in the corner. If it's a single, you'll find if Rhodes is in there, Bass is hanging around. Somebody's always hanging around their corner meaning no good. Absolutely. Rick McCord in there now. He's on the mat. Don Bass hanging on to the left arm. He leaves. Dirty Rhodes comes in. They didn't bother to tag. Hey, got him over. Four, yeah. Good move. You got to be careful with that, though. You can break your own arm. <laughs> you got 300 pounds on the other end of it. That's right. Good straight right hand that Dirty Rhodes threw, but boy, McCord was long gone by the time it got to him. Dirty Rhodes out of the corner. Look out, Don Bass holding the court up. He moves out of the way just in time, and Dirty Rhodes runs into Don Bass's partner. Bass knocked down off the uh, ring apron. Doesn't appear to be seriously shaken up. He's back up there now. McCord makes the tag on John Paul. Rhodes gets the tag on Don Bass, holds John Paul up while Don Bass let him have it with a right hand. Into the turnbuckle. John Paul really being worked on here by Don Bass. Big knee lift. Don Bass. Going after John Paul. Three and a half minutes gone in the match. Tag made by Don Bass now. You know, at least uh, one advantage. Hey, there's a tag by John Paul. Rick McCord coming in. He's going against both Don Bass and Dirty Rhodes. Well, we got them all four. I hope maybe the fifth one stays out of there. McCord slamming Don Bass down to the mat. He's up on the middle rope. Look out, Larry Wright from uh -huh. outside trips him up. McCord hits the mat. Don Bass turns him over, covers, count as one, two. It's going to be it, yeah, three. Well, there it is. 
has yep. a situation. The third man in the corner is the one who causes the problem for Rick McCord. Dirty Rhodes has got the chair in his hand. He is over here threatening John Paul with the chair. Look at that. So there. the referee has got, you can see him, is over there. Look at Larry Wright. Grabbed him right by the ankle, picked him off the rope. Re referee has just reversed the decision. He oh. gave it to John Paul and uh, Rick McCord due to outside interference. One of those rare occasions where the referee consulted with uh, the people or somebody found out about Torch uh, Larry Wright being involved and there's Dirty Rhodes ripping him with that chain right across his knuckles while Larry Wright holds him and McCord being bounced around hard while John Paul has his head slammed into a turnbuckle by Don Bass Referee trying to pull them up open. apart. All right, here comes some guys. Good. Rick McCord bleeding. Grove beautifully. Rhodes has got that chain in his hand that he used to bust Rick McCord open with. So the winners officially are Excitement Incorporated. Then on a, on a, hey, friend, that is KYB, baby, kicking your booty. Yeah, yeah, and you had to use a chain to do it. You end up losing the match to boot. Excitement Incorporated, the winners, John Paul and Rick McCord, and what was the time, Dave? Four minutes, seven seconds. Four, Four seven. minutes, seven seconds, the official time in that match. We're going to take time out. We're going to be back with more action coming up with the Memphis Ice Vice scheduled to go against Jerry Lawler and William the Freezer Thompson. They need to get Rick back out of here. We'll be back in just a moment. Wednesday night, Evansville Coliseum, son of a gun, I have set a giveaway night for the first time in history, and you'll want to be a part of it, particularly when you see the prizes that are going to be in store for you. Take a look. It's Championship Wrestling Giveaway Night, Wednesday night at the Evansville Coliseum. You'll see great wrestling action with the return of Jerry the King Lawler, plus free prizes for the fans, including 30 quartz digital watches, dolls for the kids, a portable TV, air rifle, AM, FM radio, cassette player, dual cassette recorder, radio headset stereo. All this plus outstanding wrestling action at no increase in prices. Wednesday night at the Evansville Coliseum. The great giveaway night, Wednesday night, Evansville Coliseum, plus an AWA Southern Heavyweight Championship match that will have Jerry Lawler going against Dirty Rose. Let me tell you something, Lance Russell. When that Jerry Lawler got that Tommy Rich, brother, we told you we was going to kill him and send him out of town, and that's what happened. And these people saw here just a week or so ago, brother, I put both these size 14s yes, on that big old crown of Bronze King, and he's no longer a king. Now, right there at Evansville Wednesday night, Jerry Lawler, I'm going to take that Southern belt for you, brother brother, and then you can just get out of town because that's what you love most of all, and I'm going to take it. Well, we'll be finding that one out easier said sometimes than doing, hey, how about the final match up there that's going to be a six-man tag match with Yamamoto, Sato, and Goto going against Jarrett Jarrett and Wildfire Tommy Rich, and the losing team gets tied up to the top rope in no. ten legs. We're not the losing team. Tommy Rich, you join the, the Jarrett, the loser team, the coward, rotten dog, Team, we're gonna beat you in my, my two Imperial boys. You're not gonna lose. We're gonna tie you two, three up, and we're gonna each gonna get 10 laps. 10, 20, 30 laps. Do you understand? Yeah, we hear what you're saying. It's gonna be a whale of a night of action out there Wednesday night. One of those nights you must be there. Another name from the past that's be coming back. Dennis Hall. Here's an interview. I haven't had a chance to see it yet either. So let's take a listen to it. Hey, Lance, old buddy, good to talk to you again. Haven't talked to you in a number of years. 
I guess I better introduce myself. Uh, folks out there might not recognize me or even remember me. Uh, my name's Dennis Hall. Uh, I wrestled in this area several years ago, quite prominent in the area. Last few years, I've been on the West Coast, uh, doing quite well out there. they got some great talent out there, nothing like Tennessee or the Midwest here. Took a little time off, seen two or three movies out there. You might have saw it down at the theater. They showed it downtown here. Uh, I was in Las Vegas, wrestling in Las Vegas. And at this point, I've got some good and i got some bad news. Now, the bad news is I'm no longer available. Now, the good news is I'd like for you folks to meet a little lady I met in Las Vegas, Miss Dolly Parker. Ain't she something? Look at this here. Ain't she something? Now, I know you're saying, how did they meet? How did they get together? Well, I guess I better tell you. I'd like to tell you. Din Din, let me tell these people how we got together. I went to a wrestling match in Las Vegas after working one night, and I seen Din Din up there, and I knew when I saw him that he was the man for me. Hey, I'd like to tell you folks, you probably don't know that this little lady about the talent she's got. Do you think Dolly Parton can sing? You ought to see this little lady here. This little lady sings. She sings, dances, acts, been in a couple movies. Probably seen them downtown here. And I didn't mind giving up my career to be behind Din Din. That's right, folks, and she'll stick with beside me or behind me or wherever we need to, wherever she needs to be stuck to be with me at any given time. Now, I just like to say this here: I realize you've got the top talent in the country here, and that's why we're here, and that's why she says, "Hey, we're going to Nashville, uh, Din Din. Uh, we're going to Nashville because that's where it's at. That's where it's happening out there." But her career, I said, "Honey, you can't give up that good career out here in Las Vegas." But Din Din knows I didn't mind giving up my career to be with him. It's me and Din Din all the way to the top. And, and, and I know you folks, are, you just can't wait to, to see us and meet us and see us in person. I'll tell you what, we're going to be appearing in this area, and we're looking forward to meeting all you folks. So you all come out and see him. Miss Dolly, hey, son, give me a little kiss, Miss Dolly. Oh, that's, that's what gets me going. That's where I get my drive, folks. And we'll see you out there. Coming up right now, tag team action. Tracy Smothers stepping into the ring with William the Freezer Thompson. And going against him. The Memphis Vice. All right. Memphis Vice, 100% tough, it says on Jerry Bryant's shirt. Mr. Everything, it says on the back of uh, the tights of Lou Winston. Always look forward to seeing the Memphis Vice, if for nothing else, just to uh, read their walking billboards. They always got plenty of messages. Uh, Jerry has uh, on the back of his tights, cool breeze. Bell time and we're ready to go. The Freezer starting out against Big Lou. Freezer is huge. It's the only word to describe it. Lou Winston. Big Lou goes about 250, but he's dwarfed by uh, the Freezer, isn't he? He sure is. What a Freezer weighs in. Way up around that 300 range. Jerry Bryant jumps in the air, and Freezer just sends him flying. Tracy Smothers steps in. A little celebration between Tracy and Mr. Thompson. Jerry Bryant and Lou Winston, boy, they're complaining to the referee. Did you see what he did? He had to be pulling tights and pulling hair and anything else illegal I can think of to complain about. That's what Bryant was saying. Or anything that I can think of to complain about. <laughs> He does run that mile. Well, he does. Top wrist lock. Jerry Bryant run back to the corner, and the freezer just tossed him out of there. Tracy Smothers filling in for the King. We did confirm that he was stuck in Minneapolis on his way back from Hawaii and unable to be here in time for the match. So Tracy steps back in here. Big Lou and William Thompson meeting. Mr. Everything puts a tag on Cool Breeze. Cool Breeze Jerry Bryant. He's going with a standing wrist lock and that's not a very wise choice of holes for his situation. With a man taller and heavier than he is. Oh, that, figured, that'll I make figured, it work. I figured he'd do something. Yeah, yank his hair. That'll do it. Jerry Bryant. 
a minute to go in the expiration of time, and we're going to have to uh, call it quits in this match between the Memphis Vice and William Thompson, Tracy Smothers, Bryant hanging on to the arm bar of Thompson down on the deck. As it stands now, it doesn't look like we'll have a decision out of this one, Dave, as the time is running out. Get down there very close. Bryant has uh, the freezer on the mat, but he's not in any position to go for a uh, cover at this point. No, you're right. I don't think there's any way he could get him in. He'll aggravate him, though. You can bet on that. Memphis Vice makes a tag. Lou Winston, boot to the midsection. Big right hand puts him down. 30 down seconds to, to go in our expiration of time. The freezer makes another shot for Lou Winston.